Hi guys, so I have a PHP project here and I want to convert it to a serverless thing because I don't want to pay DigitalOcean 20 bucks a month. I think this is just one of my little projects that doesn't incur much hits, so it, it, it's a perfect candidate to switch to serverless. But the problem is I've written this in PHP, which is a pain to migrate to serverless because PHP requires a whole bunch of stuff. So my plan is to re-implement in Golang. Just to demonstrate what a pain this has been to run, I've been running um, bus.debase.com using caddy and um, uh, a Docker image called, uh, from Abiosoft, with a special PHP version and Oh my gosh, you know, anyone who's run Docker in production will realize there's been issues. <laughs> um, yeah, I had this to protect the doc creds file. Yeah, the logging is a bit of a mess. Um, but to be honest, it's been fairly reliable. I don't I haven't updated PHP for a while, so there's probably some vulnerabilities here, but at least it runs in a container on core OS, and core OS is supposed to update too. But to be honest, I'm just tired of this nonsense. So let's implement this as um, a Golang app in a service context. So I've, I've already done some groundwork. I've just put a basic main.go here. There's nothing in it really. Just implemented a route to go to that goes to picks up this template, which doesn't even exist yet. And I've also set up a profile to use my AWS account and to use this domain. Uh, disable error messages so I can see errors. So let's begin. So, so I'm using DWM as my window manager, just in case you ask. So what's the issue here? Okay, how do you notice that one? So th here's the original. Here's a local one. Okay, so let's start. Okay, need to create a template structure. Have I done that? Nope. <laughs> oh no, let's just get into the right directory. So th this is where I'm working from. It's, it's the Golang sort of directory structure. So, okay, so I think I just need to curl so now let's call this V2. Okay. I think none of this is going to work here, right? None of this is going to work. So I need to do stuff here. So let me just study how I read this some time back. So I can't really remember what I did. As usual. Oh, I, I, just so you know, I've set up the environment stuff too with the um, the account key for the arrivals API for the buses in Singapore. Okay, process ID. And then fetch stuff. Okay, so if it, it just fetches stuff really and then populate some sort of template. Okay, this is some sort of countdown. Yeah, that's a countdown bit. Yeah, so I guess the JavaScript should be the same. That should be the same. Okay, so all I really need to do is implement this this curl. Um, okay, guys, tricks of the trade. I first tested the API out in Postman, and then I used code. 
so I gotta hide the um, account key from you. And then I use code to help me generate the, the Golang code that I use in my program. Furthermore, with the JSON that I have here, um, I delete this maps to a struct. So what I did is copy and paste that into into JSON to go, and then it, it gener generates that struct for me. And then I pasted that into my code over here at the top. So this becomes the SG bus arrivals type. That's the JSON response I get from the LTA API. And then I implement this function. So I'm just going to commit this and you can have a look. And uh, I guess next thing for me is map this onto a template. Next little milestone here is uh, just getting the name of the bus stop code out here. Baby steps. We'll commit this. All right, a little bit annoying, but I think I've worked through it. I rejigged the the type the type here next bus because it repeats. But next bus, the estimated time can sometimes just be like an empty string instead of null. If if it doesn't have a time, it just should be null. But in this case, unfortunately, the data mall JSON response is just an empty string. So I had to make this a string and then I'm going to try and pass time later. Okay. The template. So this is what's the PHP one is showing now and this is what my one's showing. It's pretty much the same. Um, the name actually comes from the map. So you just ignore that. But the services and the times are showing correctly. So that's good. I'll make a commit. So by default, the response of the, the buses coming in, they're not in order. You see bus number 26 is coming in before bus two. And I did in the previous PHP version, I did order them. As you can see here, I had this sort of complicated code to do it. Um, the cool thing is that in Golang, it was surprisingly simple. I, I just tried this, and um, this the sort dot slice being a go 1.8 feature. And yeah, it's, now it is looking the same as before, and I'm thinking pretty much done. We've gone serverless, guys. We've gone serverless. <laughs> Oh, guys, so just finally, I forgot how painful it was to iterate on the core OS machine. Anyway, I noticed that there was an icon thing with a strange thing. And yeah, I remembered that I wrote something in Golang to make a nicer favor icon with the bus stop number. So have a look at this. So if I change that to, I don't know, one, four, four or something, you see it's dynamically generating the... Um, 200 by 200 pixel icon. Um, I originally wrote this in Go, and now I've sort of like um, merged it into the code. Um, here, here is the thing, I just kind of refactored it a little. It's very simple code. And I'm ha hanging it off the, <clears throat> the icon route here. And now it's so integrated, so much nicer. It's so much nicer as a Golang program instead of a PHP program. Everything's together now. Oh, it's beautiful. I love this. I love it when a refactoring comes together. Please give the video a like. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more. Bye.